Hey there YouTube, Wrestling Optimus here, back with another combination Lego build and reaction video. Today we're going to be building Boba Fett's infamous ship, the Slave One, or as it says on the box here, Boba Fett's Starship. This model comes with both a Boba Fett and a Mandalorian Din Djarin minifig. I've been watching The Book of Boba Fett on Disney Plus lately, and it made me really want to build this set. Now this is not the Slave One that we see in the original Star Wars trilogy, this is the Slave One from the Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett TV series. And while we build it, we're going to be reacting to the January 19th, 2022 episode of AEW Dynamite. So without any further ado, it's Wednesday night, and you know what that means. Time to build some Lego and react to AEW. Opening it up, it looks like we got four bags of pieces and a pretty thick book. And we open up Dynamite with the return of John Moxley from Rehab, and boy does he look good. But getting back to the Legos, it's time to build Boba Fett. All right, I have no idea what that fan just shouted, but John Moxley just dropped an F-bomb on live TV and told security to get him out of here. Awesome promo by Mox, per usual. A good rah-rah speech for mental health, followed by a challenge to the entire locker room. Gotta love it. Boom! Adam Cole, baby! And here he is. Freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy with Chris Statlander to take on Adam Cole and Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Mixed tag action. Oh, Britt Baker just got devastating orange kicked followed by a boop from the alien. Oh man, Orange and Statlander just got a big old hug on the outside. They are doing nothing but taunting their opponents. I love it. Oh, but Cole and Baker counter with a nice smooch.
I do like that Britt Baker does the Pittsburgh sunrise instead of the Panama sunrise. But anyway, that's bag one, and it looks like we have six extra pieces. We're gonna set them aside and crack open bag two. All right, on to bag two as Adam Cole and Britt Baker move on to a table. Oh, but Orange Cassidy inadvertently puts the dentist through the table. Adam Cole lowers the boom in retaliation and wins the match, but his wife is still down. Fiance? Maybe fiance. All right, we got Chris Jericho talking some shit on Eddie Kingston, but his boys Santana and Ortiz are telling him to tread lightly because they're friends with Eddie Kingston. Ooh, and Santana says that maybe it is Chris who's been holding them back. Yeah, there's my correction. Adam Cole just said that Britt is his girlfriend. And it looks like we're getting Orange Cassidy versus Adam Cole next week for Beach Break. Uh-oh, here he is, the chairman, Sean Spears. The cult of meat with extra cheese. It's clobberin' time! <laughs> MJF comes out for commentary, but he doesn't get to say much because Punk hits the go to sleep and wins the match in like five seconds. Uh-oh, MJF tried to sneak up on Punk, but it did not work. He's got him by the scarf and the coward bails out. Interesting, Billy Gunn has a camera backstage and he's confronting Christian. Ah, uh, he wants a shot for his boys at the tag titles. Ooh, Christian says, make a statement and we'll talk, only to get jumped from behind. Goddamn ass, boys. Out comes Cody, and he sets up a ladder during the commercial break. Interesting. Wow, Cody is getting booed hard. Yes, I accidentally bumped the camera, so if it's in a slightly different position now, I apologize. Anyway, back to building. And Cody cutting a very obvious heel promo. 
He definitely seems to know that everybody doesn't like him. He knows about the rumors of his free agency. And I think he's just decided to ham it up. And that is the end of bag two. It looks like we have six extra pieces again. Here's what the model looks like already. And Cody is now referencing Punk's pipe bomb promo and how he talked about doing things like going to Ring of Honor, going to New Japan, and it just kind of gave Cody a checklist of things to do on the independent scene. I don't know. I like it so far. We'll see where it goes. All right, let's continue on with bag three and Cody's heel promo. Ha <laughs> ha Cody said that although CM Punk had all those ideas, Cody's the one who actually went out and did them. I love it. Oh, he is laying into these fans. Oh, he's claiming to be the Forbidden Door. He did all that stuff. He's got points. He's the heel with some points. Oh, he doesn't need to see the Bucks beat developmental, referring to Red Dragon, more than once. Damn. He's spitting hot fire, folks. Ooh, okay, he's admitting he lost to Malachi clean twice. Oh, he's got a Gunther joke. Gunner McGillicuddy, oh. He's going straight at WWE. I love to see it. Ooh, he's talking about Brody and the name. It's so funny because I read an article today saying that in eight years time, when Brody Lee Jr. is 18 and able to wrestle, it's going to be a really interesting story if he brings back that belt and challenges whoever is the TNT champion at that time. And if Cody's already setting that up in this promo by talking about how Brody Jr. is going to come back and beat up Brody King for the name Brody, I love that long-ass term storytelling. And that's why Cody had a ladder. He's challenging Sammy Guevara to a ladder match at Beach Break. Title versus title to determine the real TNT champion. Alright, it looks like we're being introduced to Malachi Black and Brody King's tag team that I believe is actually the current PWG Tag Team Champions. I guess their name is Kings of the Black Throne.
interesting. They're going to take on the Varsity Blondes. Talk about a contrast in styles. Both wrestling styles and aesthetic. Oh, wow, that was pretty quick. And the Kings of the Black Throne win after playing some psychological mind games with the Varsity Blondes, specifically Brian Pullman Jr. Interesting. Pac is interrupting Malachi. We'll see what he has to say. Says he's gonna make a martyr of Malachi Black. Apparently, Lance Archer is now working with American Top Team, and he wants a shot at Hangman Page in the world title. Um, okay, Rapungi Vice, that's Rocky Romero and Trent, seem to have hijacked Brandon Cutler and the Young Bucks camera. Interesting, it looks like they're about to sacrifice Frankie Kazarian to Lance Archer. Yeah, as Tony Schiavone's pointing out, last time we saw Dan Lambert and Lance Archer in the ring, Lance Archer was delivering his finisher to the loudmouth douchebag. So why are they suddenly working together? I hope that's explained. Well, so far, I'm glad that Archer isn't squashing Kaz. Anyway, that's the end of bag three. Looks like we only got four extra pieces this time. Going to put them away and move on to bag four. Before we go any further, I do just want to point out some of the detailing on this Boba Fett minifig. He has the iconic dent on his helmet. Hopefully the camera will go into focus so you can see it there. And he also has the Mythosaur skull signet on his shoulder. And of course, this piece is his rocket launching jetpack. There are multiple changeouts for the helmet. I'm using the antenna right now, but there's also visors. Anyway, setting him aside again. It's time to work on bag four, and we're going to start by building Dinjarin the Mandalorian and his Beskar Spear. We're also quickly going to make one of his bounties frozen in carbonite. By the way, Lance Archer hit Kazarian with a bunch of finishers and currently is refusing to pin him. Looks like a Gamorrean.
All right, Dan Lambert tried to cut a promo, but thankfully Lance Archer cut him off. And it looks like now he's going to call out Hangman Page. Archer tried to choke slam Frankie Kazarian off the stage, and here comes Hangman Page. Archer avoids the buckshot lariat, but still gets knocked out of the ring, and Hangman stands tall. Now we're going backstage to talk with Dante Martin, Matt Seidel, and I'm guessing that's Lee Moriarty. Dante says that Seidel and Moriarty have been like brothers to him, so he's going to watch their back, they're going to watch his back, blah 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 blah, Team Taz says that they're going to kick his ass. Pretty standard stuff. Interesting. Legit Layla Hirsch is now interrupting Chris Statlander's promo backstage. Oh, and Layla attacks Red Velvet. I didn't exactly see that coming. Now we got Serena Deeb versus Sky Blue. Serena hits her with the Deeb Tox, but does not go for the pin. Oh, great. Dan Lambert's back, but with his Men of the Year partners this time. Anyway, there's one wing on. That's pretty cool. All right, so it looks like Matt Hardy is teaming up with Andrade. He and Private Party along with Andrade and Jose, will now comprise the board members of the AHFO. Oh man, the acclaimed are doing another awesome spoof of Sting and Darby Allen. Right, and there is wing number two. Turn that around, and we're gonna pause building for a second so that we can listen to Max Caster's rap. Haha, -ha, he made reference to gory self-mutilation. Take that, Vince. And of course, they end it by breaking a skateboard. As Sting and Darby Allen make their way to the ring, it looks like we're pretty much done the ship. It 
It looks like Darby Allen was taken out before the bell, and Sting is going to go forward in a handicap match. But he's already taken out the acclaim, so I guess he's good for it. Well, there you go. This is the completed set. You can take the Gamorian Frozen and Carbonite. Oh, we lift that up. And then it slides in. And it even closes down. That's pretty cool. It looks like if we take Boba's guns out of his hands. sitting there and there you go and of course we have Din Djarin. and he is I guess piloting one of these scooter things the frozen Gamorrean Set it on the back there and scoot it all around. Oh, I see. If you flip it over, it looks like you can also use that as a stand. Very, very cool. I like that a lot. This is an awesome set. I'm really happy with it. Uh, definitely worth the price point. It's a little higher than your smaller sets. Obviously, it comes with two really cool mini figs, so it does end up justifying it. I would recommend it to any fans, especially of the current Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett TV series. Now I'm gonna finish up Dynamite real quick and tell you what happened. Darby came back into the match, there was a boombox spot, and Sting just went through a table. And finally, Darby Allen wins with the cough drop on Anthony Bowens. That'll do it for today's LEGO build and reactions. If you like this video, make sure to do all that normal YouTube stuff. Smash the like button, share with any wrestling or action figure fans you may know, subscribe to the channel, and spread the word. You can also talk to me over on Twitter at WrestlingOptimus or see all my best figure photography over on Instagram at WrestlingOptimus. If you haven't seen the Complete Pickle Predictions Championship League Rewind, you can check that out right here. But until next time, I've been Wrestling Optimus, and I'll catch you later.